Hi, Sanu. Hi. I really enjoyed your film, Our Kariyam. Um, as I uh, messaged you, you know, I love the way you develop the characters, the whole atmosphere of the film, and also the very natural storytelling that you chose to go with. Um, I have a lot of questions. Um, I, in fact, tweeted uh, and asked people also if they have questions, they can send it to me. And I described your film as a very calmly unsettling film. Now, um, before we start, I want to just warn the viewers that there are going to be spoilers in this uh, chat. So if you haven't watched Our Kariyam yet, I would suggest that you first go and watch it on either Prime Video or Neestream and uh, then uh, watch this interview. Uh, so first I want to ask, uh, wh where did the idea originate? Was this idea, you know, something that you have been working on for some time and then did you add elements like COVID and lockdown when you shot it because you had to contemporize it or uh, was it done during the uh, COVID, post-COVID, the scripting? Uh, I mean, the, the, the film... film uh came out of uh, the, you know, fact that uh, I was getting some time and, you know, probably, uh, you know, if you, if you write something which can be done, we, we could do a film. So this is classmate of mine who produced it, you know, classmate of mine from school. Uh, so, you know, we were friends from those days. We had lost in touch with each other. Then I found him as a, you know, producer in the Malayalam industry. He found me as a cameraman in the you know, film industry and we met again. So he has been after me for like a... Uh, for some years to direct a film for him. So the, we, we tried to uh, come up with an idea which could be uh, done in the middle of uh, that, you know, uh, COVID uh, reality. Uh, you know, the lockdown had ended, but, uh, you know, it was still uh, in that kind of a situation. So we wrote something which we could execute in that time. That's how it uh, originated. So there are two parts to it. The, the first part of it is something which I, you know, me and my wife had, uh, Sadipa, both of us had uh, come back from Bombay in the you know early days of the lockdown so one part of it is that okay. the second part is a uh, line which i had written a few years back which you know we kind of readapted and fitted into that story and, you know. okay okay now uh, there are three uh, script writers uh, you know credited for it uh, there's arun janardhanan there's uh, rajesh ravi and yourself so uh, were you working together in tandem or uh, how did the scripting go about uh, the, 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 scripting? About the dialogues yeah, so the scripting uh, process, uh, basically, uh, I was writing the story uh, from home. Uh, so, uh, you know, me and my wife would go out on uh, drives in the evening and, you know, thrash out a story while we were, you know, driving through, you know, my hometown. So we were st staying with our parents. We had gone back to stay with our parents, pretty much like how it's in the story. Uh, so, uh, at, at some stage, uh, Rajesh Ravi, who, uh, with whom I was supposed to shoot a film, uh, you know, which he was supposed to direct. Uh, so, he was also free. So, he got interested. So, I told the story to him. He got interested. So, he said, uh, let me write. So, he started writing a screenplay on the other side as I'm developing the story. So, we would send each other what we are writing. And, you know, that process went on for a while. And one day, we met up and, you know, kind of uh, looked at it. Uh, I had issues with the kind of... Uh, travels that are there in the film, you know, uh, whether you kind of uh, manage to travel with the story, travel with the character. So I had issues with all that. So we kind of uh, sat down. Uh, this, this took about two and a half months. And then we sat down for about eight days. And we broke down both of them, both, you know, what I had written, what he had written, and, you know, built a screenplay back from the from those bricks. Okay. Uh, but traveling with the characters completely this time, because by this time we knew the characters really well. Then, you know, this is where we arrived. That's how it happened. Okay. If you could just tell us how much time did it take to the writing process take and how much time, uh, how many days did you shoot the entire film? In? See, uh, writing the story from the time we started thinking about it, you know, building it into a story which is, uh, you know, logically uh, cohesive. Uh, it took about uh, two and a half months. Okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the next uh, draft, the second draft, which uh, pretty much is our final uh, draft, you know, we, we wrote from there, like, you know, we added another 10 pages to it. So that happened in a matter of eight days of continuous working from morning, like, you know, seven o'clock, we would get up and start writing and go on till 11 in the night with two breaks in between, like hardcore writing. <laughs> and the shooting? 
shooting took 30 days uh, 30 days yeah, yeah. in 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 one uh, single schedule like you know everybody came in together did test stayed together shot together got out tested went home oh. <laughs> okay okay now i want to ask you about your approach to the film was it pre decided as in what sets the film apart is the way that you have really underplayed even the most tense and dramatic moments so was that treatment kind of pre decided while you were writing it absolutely absolutely i mean if you look at it closely uh, i mean it's all tricks which have been employed very nicely in commercial cinema over the years but i've just played it on a different meter that's all i mean technically speaking you know uh, normally in a cinema you would uh, pitch from the beginning a little higher dramatically then you know when you know when that uh, point comes you end up uh, pushing it with music and you raise it and so it's in the contrast i mean the same kind of contrast is what i have employed you know it's uh, it's uh, tricks of the uh, of commercial uh, cinema storytelling itself so i pitched it low and you know raised it at a you know in a different way that's all so it's it's the same thing <laughs> but if i go into specifics you know one of the turning points in the film is when ityavara tells his son in law roy that you know there is a body that's buried in a corner of the house and uh, you know we need to dispose it of and in any normal film that would be like a high point you know there would be a build up and there would be a crescendo and it would be like a big revelation yes. but the way you played it is like you know he is just pass the comment you know as if he's talking about the weather or something <laughs> what made you decide to go in for that kind of a treatment for this uh, scene correct correct that's what i'm saying it's it's a, it's the same uh, what, what is being done in commercial cinema itself you know you, yeah. you keep it at a uh, at a certain level then you bring in the bring in the contrast of how it got told i am doing exactly the same thing i i pitched the beginning very low and i raised it not that high i raised it only here that, that, that's all that has happened it's a, it's a, you know it's it's a, it's a different way of uh, looking at it but it's with the same uh, same tricks same kind of communication tricks which are generally used in commercial cinema and and your background music also i mean uh, you've used a very uh, you know the strumming of a guitar at most points um, was that something what that was on the back of your mind while you were shooting the scene or was that on the edit table that you decided that okay this is how i'm going to play it uh no no the the thing is uh, uh, you, w- what i understood out of doing this film is that uh, you, you managed to tell the story uh, it, it's all edits <clears throat> you managed to tell the story very clearly at a few different stages one is at the writing stage itself then when you uh, direct the film uh, the camera work itself is an edit because you are trying to omit out certain things show certain things so these are all edits happening uh, then your edit edit uh, at the end of the edit edit if uh, you know uh, things are being told to you in the film in the tone it has to be told in in the mood it has to be told in with the right kind of emotions uh, probably uh, music could do something else uh, you know that, that, that's what uh, i tried to do uh, so I, i i to me the film was uh, you know the tracks of the film uh, the travels in the film uh, you know em- emotionally guiding the viewer into seeing a film in a particular way was actually being done by you know the mood in the lighting the way the scenes were being played out the way it is uh, photographed so uh, i thought i have a chance to use music for you know other things like you know the tracks which are not present in the visuals right so we were working with themes which were for you know between uh, shirley and sophie or you know uh, shirley and etiavara or the you know agustin on the other side or god or you know we we got the freedom to do that because you know the the film was doing what it was supposed to do without music really you know pushing the scenes right right you know i again want to say uh, come around the same uh, subject you know the film could have easily gone into the thriller mode you know or a murder mystery kind of a mode uh, and which is a very successful genre uh, but you instead consciously chose to explore you know nuances like how the dead man was per- augustine was perceived by other people um you know how itivara sort of justifies himself using religious philosophy were you not at any time tempted to go the normal way the conventional way of making it like a thriller you know especially since drishyam and all this have become such big hits were you not at any time uh, tempted to go the conventional way 
to take the conventional route uh, i i mean uh, the, the the whole uh, system around you you know uh, is always there to push you into that direction yeah uh, that is the direction i wanted to go i did not want to go into uh, okay. it is probably my age because the uh, you know the second part of the film when i had written it like a few years back i mean quite some years back as a thriller line of you know uh, husband and wife in a financial difficulty tries to push a father in law into selling the property mm-hmm. and he comes up with an excuse that you know uh, there's something like this okay and and it's the story of how the, the you know the daughter and the son in law they blackmail the father in law into you know selling selling it Uh-huh. Uh, but uh, finally you know it, it, it something else happens there's another body in the pit so so that that is the line i had written uh, okay okay <laughs> written long back i, I mean i am not really uh, you know keen to tell the story same thriller normally uh, you even hide you know the nature of the uh, you know of your characters because that surprise is something which can be used to turn the plot around constantly so i didn't want to go that way because you know we had looked at a lot of them you know over the years and okay. we, i mean i i'm more interested in understanding the human relation side of it and you know the kind of drama that happens you know where it looks like there's no drama so that's why we wanted to steer the writing that way yeah. okay. <laughs> but a thriller always uh, is easier to make uh, with a uh, with financiers and producers and everybody right, because there right. are templates which uh, work for everybody right 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 and it's it's a bit of a subversion Okay, okay. Now, um, did uh, religion, of course, plays a very vital sort of element in the story. You know, the film begins with Roy sort of commenting, you know, how his wife Shirley is sleeping peacefully because she believes in God and entrusts everything into His hands. Itiyavra, of course, is somebody who we see praying every night and also who always says that you know it's all in God's hands, it's God's will. we don't know what's in store um our karyam as the title suggests so were these some of your own personal reflections about god and existentialism that moved inside into the script a lot of it uh, comes up uh, you know a lot of it comes from uh, my you know growing up uh, as a Uh, you know bit of a questioning child uh, in a, in a very uh, you know orthodox uh, christian family uh, the the kind of uh, uh, the liberalism that my parents had you know they they both were school teachers but you know they they constantly believed in a whole lot of things which uh, uh, did not kind of uh, you know they, they, they all seemed uh, at log ahead with each other you know they they believed in a bit of science uh, very strongly believed in religion uh, god uh, certain amount of spirituality uh, a certain amount of occult Uh, you know certain traditions which have uh, lost its reasoning beyond a point so you know so it basically came uh, out of the kind of talks i would have with my father about a lot of sort of these things i mean he is like a very learned man but a very staunch believer in the way the church is and god and all that so a lot of it comes out of that and you know okay. so, so certain ideas come from uh, my own searches into what god could actually be like you know so it, it takes you into uh, stuff like you know uh, theoretical physics you know uh, dimensions where if you want to observe things in a dimension it's very simple you be in the next dimension and you know you can see it in a timeline so you know god to me felt like you know something uh, which you know looks at you from a different dimension where you can see your life timeline completely it's uh, you know it's a different time frame for him it's too simple so you know uh, so that kind of things you know we kind of wanted to bring in because there's some kind of a you know logical consistency to some of the arguments i mean you know yeah it it so uh... <laughs> i want to ask you about the casting of biju menon as uh, itevra now uh, it's a very unusual choice because you know i from my limited knowledge of malayalam cinema i have never seen him as an aged grandfather you know that kind of a role in fact as recent as last year we remember him for his role in uh ayapnam koshyam you know he is this he man sort of ayapnam koshyam yeah how did you think that biju menon would be apt for this uh role uh, and was it your first choice or did it come over time i i, I went to biju menon for roy uh, first oh, uh, but on the way i was telling my uh, yeah I, i on the way i was telling my co writer you know what if he ask him uh, if he likes the other character uh, there there were advantages to doing it i mean he is absolutely a good craftsman it would be challenging for him uh, 
so I, I had a hope that he would probably uh, agree to it if he liked the script. So we 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 read it out to him. You know, in a two-hour narration, got over, and he said, uh, "It's a it's a well-conceived script. I'll I'll do it." I so I said, do, "But which role?" So he said, "Draw it." But that's what you came to me for. No. So I said, "What do you think about the other one?" So he kind of rejected it in the beginning. He said, "No, man, it's too old and all." <laughs> you know it should look made up it won't both and then he thought for a while and he said no i'm i'm trying to do uh, you know uh, something different and probably this is what i should do you no know, we'll do it uh, so i i called uh, you know uh, there, there's a makeup person we have uh, uh, always worked with in uh, malayalam so this old ranjit ambadi he had a national award last year fantastic guy so he's the first guy i called uh, after that and you know once he said okay you know this was okay for me because i worked with him early and i know what uh, you know he could do <laughs> now even though you know you're an accomplished cinematographer yourself you chose to not shoot your own first film um shrinivas reddy has shot it uh why did you choose uh, to like stay away from the camera for your uh, di- directorial debut uh, was that a conscious choice or was that something that you felt as you neared neared shooting that okay i think i should focus just on direction i mean one one of the reasons why uh, i have not gone into you know directing a film before is uh, i'm very aware of the amount of hard work that goes into it you know i i've had like a little easier life you know <laughs> dealing with other people taking that pain and you know okay. people go and shoot the responsibility is lower and you know life is a little simpler mm. uh, i i i'm i'm really aware of uh, you know what it means to what it takes from you to really make a film uh, so at that level i've always wanted a uh, you know different person to you know take up that responsibility because i'm you know because i'm sensitive to it a lot of my attention will constantly go into it i wanted someone else to take that uh, load off me uh, for sure okay. yeah and and uh, reddy was my associate for many years about you know 10 years so we have that rapo and it's uh, easy okay. for us to work together yeah. okay so it's like it's like we kind of help each other there's something which i can't do you know he'll do that there's something which he can't do i'll do that i mean it, it's like a very uh, you know friendly uh, relationship that we have Okay. Now, uh, our career officially released in theaters in Kerala in April, right? I uh, I'm curious to know what's I'm sure I mean because of the COVID and you know the kind of uh, rules they are in uh, theaters at that time, the footfalls must be less. But what was the kind of response that it had in theaters? The the people who uh, saw it loved it. Uh, there were so many guys who saw it and you know uh, wrote to me that there were other people who said uh, you know what is happening to this film uh, if the film was an animal it would feel bad about it you know that's that's what is happening to this film uh, so uh, all that uh, uh, went on for a while and the film didn't uh, sustain in uh, theaters for too long not too many people were coming into theaters yeah uh, especially uh, I, i think uh, you know the older generation uh, was just not coming in it was only the youth who were coming in so uh, you know it just didn't work it just didn't work okay and now that it's released on ott platforms what's the kind of reaction you're getting it's it's, it's fantastic i mean i i you know i, I keep uh, getting messages from people who search me out on you know instagram and stuff and send me messages uh, very well uh, received in terms of uh, people kind of seeing everything that we put in uh, you know we thought okay people don't people won't see it we are okay the plot will still go through let's still put it in so there's a there's a lot of stuff in the film which is in you know that kind of a space and i'm very happy to see you know people see everything that we have put into the film uh, you know right. a lot of uh, other readings are happening you know the, the malayali movie watching society is amazing i mean you know yes, yes. the amount of uh, writing they do on a film and you know the, the way they celebrate something good and all is amazing i mean it's a, it's a privilege to be uh, able to talk to the you know malayali film uh, audience here yeah. truly okay now sanu tell us what are you going to be working on next as uh, uh, as a cinematographer first of all uh, i know malik is uh, uh, scheduled to release uh, and most probably yeah. Ma- malik is the next one to come out yeah malik is the next one to come out uh, i have uh, almost finished a telugu film after uh, december so that that's that would probably be the one after that I uh, committed to shooting two more films. Uh, I am writing uh, parallelly. Okay. Uh, let's see. I mean, you know, I, I look at it as uh, two, two different things. Writing is one thing, and you know, if what the written material is worth being made into a movie, 
then you make it into a movie it's not like there's no compulsion to really make a film other than you know telling a story <laughs> <laughs> right 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 okay thank you so much uh, sanu for talking to us and all the best for your next venture thank you thank you